Hey what's up guys, Alex here, thank you for checking this video and welcome to another episode about Gutenberg. In this tutorial we're going to take a look on how to upload a custom image to use in the background area as a background for our call to action custom block. From a developer that hates plugins, here's a plugin that doesn't suck. Elementor is the best page builder for WordPress. Super light, scalable, and with an intuitive interface, Elementor will help you build professional looking websites in a few minutes. Click the link in the description below to learn more. So first of all, let's scroll down where we're defining all the attributes of our custom block. And right after the body, we want to define a new attribute to hold on the background image that we're going to upload. So we can simply call this attribute background image. But as usual, this is a custom object, so you can call it however you want. We need to define just a couple of attributes inside this object. The first one is the type, what type of data and value we're going to accept inside this background image object. In our case, it's going to be string. We just want to save the string of the URL of the image. And as a default, we can specify a null value. So we know that this background image, if it's not defined, it's absolutely empty. It's just undefined. After doing that, let's scroll down to our edit method. And here, like we're doing for all the other objects and attributes that we're calling, let's call also the background image attribute so we can manipulate it. And then we need to define the specific function that will take care of updating our background image. In our case, it's going to be called something like function on select image so it's going to happen when the user selects an image from the media uploader and here we can pass the new image variable and we can use the usual set attributes and the set attributes we can update like we usually do the background image attribute with we cannot pass the new image because this new image is actually a full object. Whenever we use the media uploader or WordPress, the new image comes with everything. It comes with the different sizes, with the name, with the extension, with the whatever, like all the information of the image uploaded. In order for us to just save the background image as a string, like we specify here, we just want the URL, we don't want anything else. We need to access the attribute that we're interested in inside the new image object. And the attribute is inside sizes. And then we want to tap the full image and then return the URL. Of course, this is not really correct to do because we should actually handle different resolutions. And every time the uh, user uploads an image, it creates different resolutions based on the settings in their administration panel, we should grab the entire object and then return the proper resolution based on the screen size and the monitor size and all this kind of stuff. But for the sake of this tutorial, let's just handle a simple URL. Uh, I suggest you though to improve upon this section and try to use the entire object and see how to dynamically return everything that you need at the proper moment. So now that we did that, we need to create an extra section inside our uh, panel body. So up until now, whenever we have something custom, for example, we select the title or the description or we select the entire block, something changed. We created the panel body where we can control the font color settings for the uh, title and description. We want to do something else. So whenever the block is selected, we want to have an extra option, maybe at the bottom here, in order to upload an image. So let's do it. Right after the panel body here that we specified for the color settings, we can create another panel body element and we can give it a title, equal background, image settings, something like that. And inside here, we can put everything that we need in order to allow the user to uh, specify what to do. So let's first set the title. We can say select background image, something like that. Pretty, pretty simple. And here we need to use a new element that we never used before because we need to use the built-in media uploader of WordPress in order to make things easier for us and for the user and keep it consistent. So instead of creating something new from scratch, we can just use the media 
upload element and of course these media upload actually it's capital M we don't need to close this but it's a self-closing element of course this media upload we cannot just use it right off the bat because we never use it before as for the same thing as for the panel body or inspect and control every time we use something we need to use something coming from the editor or the components of WordPress we need to import them as constant variables so we need to do exactly the same here and just reference the media upload constant variable from the WP editor. So now we can use it. Perfect. Let's scroll all the way back to the media upload. Perfect. Now that we imported that element from the WP editor, we can start editing all the attributes that we need to specify in order to make it usable. So first of all, we need to specify a bunch of attributes. So the first one is the on select. So whenever the user selects the image that is part of the library or a newly uploaded, we need to specify the method that we want to trigger and it's basically identical what we're doing here on change of the color palette or on change whenever the user types on a rich text elements here on select we need to specify the newly created function on select image to trigger what we want to do that we want to specify the type because we want to allow just images to be uploaded we want to we don't want to allow anything else and then we want to specify a default value that it's actually going to be the background image uh, object so automatically if an image is already selected it's part of the button and uh, we're not going to reset it every time we reopen our post type with our custom block and then we need to specify the render attribute so the render attributes it's basically uh, what tells wordpress how to style this media upload button and uh, it's going to be kind of complicated for now because we have the possibility to style this button automatically wordpress applies its classes and its its style to it but we have the ability to change the uh, image that it's using the button to change the text that it's using the button so we're gonna do it super quickly first of all we need to open of course the curly brackets because we're gonna use something in javascript then in the regular brackets we need to pass the action whenever these opens up so when we're rendering this method we need to pass the open function in order to uh, assign it to the custom button and the custom icon that we're specifying here right after the regular brackets we need to open the arrow function and inside the arrow function we can specify basically the structure so here we can use kind of like plain html to uh, update the structure of the button itself and i'm going to use a custom element of gutenberg once again that is going to be the icon button because I want to use a fancy and nice icon button and also in this case I need to import this icon button from the WP components so here let's put a comma and icon button and there you go now we need to style the icon button first of all the first thing that I want to do you know want I want to give it the text of the icon button so inside this button is going to be a background image or something like select background image but even background image is fine otherwise it's going to be the default upload text of uh, the media upload button but in this case we can customize it and then we need to specify a bunch of attributes in order to make it usable and make it work so the first thing that we need to do and always remember is on click what's going to happen here because we're changing the default media upload behavior we're changing the rendering of this behavior so we need to specify that on click this has to trigger the open method that we're passing whenever we are opening the rendering attribute so at least the button will work then we want to use a custom icon and the custom icon we can use the simple upload and also the name of this icon it's part of the dash icons of wordpress you can search on google wordpress dash icons it's a preset of icons part of the administration panel of wordpress so you can simply specify the name of that specific icon and automatically because the icon attribute uh, grabs the dash icons or searches for that svg whenever a name class is specified we're gonna be good to go the last thing that i want to do I want to specify a bunch of uh, um, class names and I'm going to use default class names of WordPress in order to keep the uh, UI of WordPress consistent but of course you can specify your own class names if you want uh, and you can customize this button however you want in my case I'm going to use the editor dash media dash 
placeholder underscore underscore button the classes of wordpress are not the best then is button then is dash default and then is dash large uh yeah you can see i'm not a fan of the class naming of wordpress but it is what it is so now we have this button if we save it and always remember to have your npm start build running in the place of your uh, folder directory and here start build otherwise all these javascript won't be compiled and recognized let's access our administration panel let's refresh and see what we did so if we refresh the page and we select our call to action custom block you can see now we have another extra panel here called background image setting and we can select a background image if we click on it of course it's going to open our media uploader and we can select an image select and Nothing happens, of course, because we didn't specify anything. We're gonna see how to handle this, how to upload that image as a background, and how to use it in our actual post whenever we preview the post in the next lesson. Thank you so much, guys, for watching, and until the next one, as usual, happy coding.